sorry. That's just an old habit from culinary school. <laughs> I just feel so disorganized because literally all I could think of right now is this meal I just watched and I want to dive in. Hey guys, today we are going to be checking out German beef Rolandi recipe plus homemade spazil. I'm so sorry if I got some of the words wrongly. This beef rouladen may be your new favorite Sunday meal. Stuffed up with bacon, <laughs> mustard, pickles, and onions in a tasty Sunday sauce. Oh, oh wow. my goodness, is this so good. Should I be doing this to myself? No, yeah. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to prep up, so let's get to it. Sound mm -hmm. good? Let's cook. In Chef Billy Parisi fashion, we are going to start off by prepping up an onion. I'm going to be using a half of a yellow onion. You could use a red, a white, a sweet, or even a shallot. So after you slice it in half, remove that outside peel. We want to thinly slice it or julienne it oh, wow. just like this. And again, we're only using a half of an onion. Now for the pickles. Gherkins are classically used, which is a small to medium sized pickle. I'm going to be using five of these. Slice off the end. And then what we want to do, just like the onion, is actually julienne them. Now, if you like big, bold pickle flavors, go ahead and quarter these. If you quarter them, you are going to need twice the amount of pickles. These thin little pickles. But this looks like cucumber. I'm sorry, I don't actually know what pickles looks like or what it is. I know cucumber, but this looks like cucumber, to be honest. I'm so look <laughs> perfect throughout our roulade. And now for the beef. I have a two-pound piece of top round. Exactly, the other alternates that you could use are sirloin, oh. ribeye, bottom round, or flank steak. Now, what we want to do is cut this in half because it is such a long piece of meat. And then after you slice it, we are going to take each piece and we're going to thinly slice it again. So what I'm going to do is just put it up on its side and then thinly slice four slices in this chunk, giving us a total of eight slices. And for that last piece, you're going to need to lay it flat and put your hand on it or else it's going to wiggle all over the place. And yeah. the shape of it is not going to be too pretty. Okay, set this to the side on a plate platter, a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Going back to your cutting board, I'm going to lay down a big piece of plastic wrap. You could also use a Ziploc bag as well. Now, placing one piece of meat onto the plastic wrap, putting the rest of the plastic wrap over top of it, we are going to use a mallet and we want to pound it thin. For size... We're essentially doubling the size, but it's still going to be about a quarter inch thick. If you're a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker, no problem, as long as it's doubled in size. Then just simply set it to the side on a plate or a platter and repeat the process until all eight steaks have been pounded out. Mm -hmm. And now to roll this up, starting with just one piece of the pounded out round steak, we're gonna season just one side with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. And then what we want to do is spread on one tablespoon of Dijon mustard or a good German ground mustard like I'm using. Now I have eight total slices of bacon sliced in half long ways. We're going to place two of those right on top of the mustard, followed up with a little bit of the julienne onion. yellow onion. Yeah. Now we're going to evenly spread the onion through the other seven, so make sure to use accordingly. Same and thing with the pickles. Them. We are going to add some right to the center. Now, to roll this up, what I like to do first is roll over the sides, just like they do at Chipotle when they roll up the burrito. And then starting from the back to the front, tightly roll it, making sure that center piece is rolled over to the middle all the way until the end. Then we're just going to set it to the side on a platter or plate or sheet tray lined with parchment paper and repeat the process until all of the beef and all of these stuffing ingredients have been used. Now, using about a foot of butcher's twine, what we want to do is just wrap these around the center. You could absolutely do another wrap going in the opposite direction. I don't think you need it because we fold it in the beef just to be safe. Then just give it a double knot, of course, and then trim off any excess. Repeat the process again for all eight total of these beef roulades. Now, I've washed my cutting board because I had beef on there. We have a yeah. little bit more prep to do, and this has to do with the sauce. We have one yellow onion. Slice it in half, remove the ends, take off that outside peel. And then what we want to do is just simply large dice these. This is going to be used as mirepoix in our sauce. Set it to the side in a bowl. 
we have two stalks of celery that we are also going to large dice. Then followed up with two carrots that I peeled again, large dice, just like it's everything a good else. Chef. I love how I diced all of these vegetables. Now set those to the side in a bowl. I've got two leeks here. Remember, you can go up a little bit into the green. We're going to slice that in half, then slice it again. So essentially quartering it. And then what we want to do is thinly slice both of these leeks. We're going to transfer them to a bowl along with the carrot, celery, and onions. We're taking that bowl of vegetables along with our beef or laden over to the cooktop. I've got a large rondo pot. You could also just use a large pot. I'm going to add in a quarter cup of clarified butter. You could use vegetable oil or canola oil. Turn the heat on to high once it begins to lightly smoke. Right. We are going to add in a beef roulades one at a time. Make sure they don't touch each other. We don't want to steam oh. them. We want to sear them. You may need to do this in batches if your pot isn't that big. After about three to four minutes or so, we're just going to flip them over. We're just trying to get a little bit of a brown sear on both sides just like this. Once we flip them, cook them for another three to four minutes, we are going to come back to this pot. What we want to do is set each of these beef roulades to the side on a plate, platter, sheet tray line with parchment paper, whatever you got. Now go back over to that pot. We're still on medium high heat. We are going to add in all of those vegetables. And in addition, we're going to add in a small little bunch of flat leaf parsley. Now we want to cook this for about three to five minutes. We're really just looking to get a light brown on there. You're going to get some of that fond off the bottom, some of those nummy goodnesses from the beef on the bottom cooked right in there. It's absolutely perfect. And at this point, we're going to add in two tablespoons of tomato paste. This is going to help add some body, help thicken up our sauce. It's also going to give it a nice red color at the end. This only takes about two minutes or so. We just stir it constantly until it's completely mixed into the vegetables just like this. Now, we are going to deglaze with one cup of Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot. If you do not drink wine, just simply skip this process. We are going to cook this down until all sec or almost gone. You see how that wine has absorbed mostly into the vegetables? It's yeah. almost gone. This is perfect consistency. Now, grab four cups of good beef stock. You know, I've got a great recipe for you here. We are going to pour that in there. And then we want to season this well with salt and cracked black pepper. Now, make sure you taste this. This is the braising liquid that's going to cook our beef. So you want it to be well seasoned. Go back over to our seared beef roulades. We are going to add them in one at a time all throughout this Rondo pot. Now, at this point, we are going into the oven on 325 oh, degrees wow. Fahrenheit. It's, it's going to take about two hours for these to completely cook. So we obviously time. have plenty of time here. You can go binge watch a show, read a book, whatever you want. But what I'm thinking, let's make some homemade spatzel while we can. In a stand mixer, I'm going to add in three cups of all-purpose flour. I have no clue why I added it in the way that I just did. <laughs> Next, grab a spoon, and we're just going to make a little well right in the center. Once you've made that well, we're going to add in five oh, large wow. cold eggs. The next thing we want to do is one add in egg, one though? teaspoon of sea salt. I've got my whisk attachment. I'm just going to fix it on and then lock it in place. Then we're just going to turn it on low speed here. Make sure the ingredients are starting to combine just like this. Now, at this point, we have three quarters cup of cold water. We are going to slowly add in there until it is combined into the mixture, just like this. Now, once it is combined, let's go adjust the speed again because we're going to crank it on to high. We want to mix this for about three to four minutes. It's going to become almost like a thick pancake batter. A great way that I know how it's done is when I pull it up, kind of just falls off right like yeah, this. I'm sorry. This is perfect consistency. Now you have the option of letting this rest for 15 to 30 minutes or you can begin cooking right away totally up to you. Also, just another good sign in this is you'll see some bubbles kind of form in there. That's perfect. Now let's go over to a large pot of boiling water. We are going to season it with salt. I was always told the water should be as salty as the ocean when you cook in there. Now, I have a spatzel maker. You could also use a perforated pan or even a colander with large holes. Let's take about a half cup of our spatzel batter. We're going to add it right down to our spatzel Ooh. maker. In this case, it's a little square 
and we put it right in the center and then we move it back and forth it's got some rubber spatula like pieces attached to this little square here and as we move it back and forth small pieces of that batter go right through the hole into the water now the pieces are maybe just an inch to an inch and a half and as they get heavy they sort of break off and fall into the water which is exactly what we want now these are going to cook really quickly honestly maybe just a minute or two you see once they float to the top boom they are finished now because everything's not done for me as far as the roulades are concerned I'm going to cook this in batches and add them to a large container full of ice water. Now, you don't want to leave these in too long or they will be waterlogged, but we'll drain them before we cook them. Now, let's go have a look at our beef roulade. And oh my gosh, it looks so good and the smells are incredible in here. Just want to give you a quick warning. Now that this is out of the oven, it is go time. Things are going to move really quickly. Here's what we do. Take each of the beef roulades out of the rondeau pot of the sauce, and we're just going to lay them to the side. Plate, platter, cookie sheet, tray, line with parchment paper. Oh, Sorry, that's just an old habit from culinary school in the restaurant industry. <laughs> Everything it. goes on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Now, once they're all out of there, we are going to strain this stock completely through a chinois or a fine mesh strainer or cheesecloth, if that's what you have. Make sure to get all of that goodness out of that chinois as much as you possibly can into that pot. Just set that to the side. Take your pot. We're going back to the cooktop. We are going to crank the heat on to medium high. This is only going to take about four to six minutes. This is great timing. Let that beef rest. The sauce is going to reduce by about one third. At this point, we're going to finish it with one tablespoon of unsalted butter and one to two tablespoons of red currant jelly or regular grape jelly. This is going to add some really cool flavors in there. Now, the sauce should be well seasoned because we already seasoned it before, and as it cooks down, it's going to concentrate even more and be more flavorful. Once everything is whisked in, just set it to the side. Now, quickly for the spatzel, I've got a large frying pan. I'm going to add in a quarter cup of unsalted butter. Once it is melted, drain those spatzel in the cold water, and we're going to add that right to this pan. Now, we want to cook it just for maybe two to three minutes. We want to get a very light little brown in there. Remember the heat is on medium high. That butter is already starting to brown and melt. That's all we are looking to do here. Be sure to season the spatzel with salt, a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. Give it a good mix. You could also add things like Parmesan cheese to it, fresh herbs. I've seen spinach mixed in there. You can do a lot of things here. I'm doing it very simple, very classic. Once you've got a little bit of brown on there and they're warm and cooked through, set them to the side. These fundamental basic techniques, when you put them into practice and apply them to homemade food from scratch, oh my gosh, you're not going to want to go anywhere else. Oh. Neither are your friends. They're going to want to come to your <laughs> house. But when you do these things over and over again, making sure the beef is rolled up tight, the sauce, the spatzel, all of those techniques into these recipes, it will absolutely help elevate your everyday cooking, no matter what it is you're making. Okay, we are going to do a few things to plate this up, and here's exactly how you do it. I like to serve the roulades little casserole dish or a shallow bowl is great. I also like to slice some of them in half because I want to showcase what's in the inside of these roulades. The bacon, the pickles, the onions. It's so good. Now make sure to pour a good amount of that sauce all over the top. Leave plenty in the bottom of the bowl just in case people want extra sauce. Then you finish with some finely chopped parsley or chives. For the spatzel, add a good amount right to a bowl. You finish it with parsley. Oh my gosh, I can't wait any longer. Let's get in this. Come on. <laughs> that was so nice. <laughs> okay. This. See, I'm going to say he's not a nice person at all. The, the final look of after taking a taste of this sumptuous, delicious meal he made. God, I want to have a taste of that. That looks so delicious. Like, I literally just sat here and watched a whole recipe of how to make this beef and this parcel. I feel like next time I'm going to do a, react to a food video like this, I'm going to be probably trying to make it alongside with you guys to see, to actually taste it in my own way <laughs> and then it's never going to come out like it is or taste exactly what it should taste like but just a just a feeling just getting the feeling a bit of what it the taste actually is and altogether this is actually I, I just feel like i did myself dirty by watching this video 
Wow. And yeah, I noticed each country has their different style of cooking and, you know, herbs and flavor to their food. I could see you used wine at some point. My entire life, I've never used wine to cook a food. I know I'm that loca, yeah, but I'm hoping to try that out soon and, you know, see how it tastes and how if I differs in, you know, in food. But let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Have you ever tried out this recipe? Do you think this food is delicious? That's my question, please. <laughs> I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye, guys. I love you. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel. And um, feel free to use the buy me coffee link. I just feel so disorganized because literally all I could think of right now is this meal I just watched. And I want to dive in, like have a taste of it. Oh, God. Bye, guys.